Hi guys! I'm gonna be showing you a new thing that I made. I made a mobile app in this new platform called Thunkable. In Thunkable, you can make so many different types of apps according to your desire. And there are so many different things you can do. Let me just show you what I did in my app. And I also want to say that if you want to use Thunkable, you have to sign in with Google for uh, if you want to make apps on it. And also, you can watch the tutorials to see more ways how to build an app in Thunkable. Okay, so here, let me show you my app that I made by myself. Okay, so here, as you can see, it says text to sh speech. What does that mean? It's actually just a label. And here we can see a switch. Let's see what it does when I click on it. Okay, here we go. Whoa, there's a robot. Okay. So speech is ready. Wait, what? Text to speech robot is ready. Okay, let's type something here. Mm. Here. Peter, Peter, pumpkin eater, had a wife and couldn't keep her. He put her in a pumpkin shell, and then he kept her very well. Peter, Peter, pumpkin eater, had another, and didn't love her. Peter learned to read and spell, and then he loved her very well. <laughs> That's such a funny rhyme. Whoa, what does this button here do? I said it was called clear. Let's click on it and find out. Whoa, my text is gone. Wow, that actually makes a lot of sense. <laughs> okay. Whoa. There's a slider here. Let's move it and see what happens. Okay, so that's actually the end of the app. So this is how you exit the app when you're done using your text-to-speech, which I found really funny and really cool at the same time. So, so remember to share this on your social media. Well, before I end the live stream, I want to explain how I made the app. Okay, so if you're also interested in making Thunkable, you can also use Thunkable. You only have to sign in with your Google account and you can already start making apps. Just type, type in Thunkable, click on the link that Google shows you, then you can get started with making apps yourself. Okay, let me show you how I made this app. So as you can see, I have three screens. Screen one, screen two, and screen three. So you might be asking, what do all these screens mean? That means I showed you when I clicked on the switch here, I went to screen two. And when I clicked on submit, it read out my text. And when I clicked on clear, it removed my text. It's like a delete button, but it deletes everything. You can type in many long sentences in the text input. Well, before I start off with showing how it went from one screen to another, let me show you what these are here. This is the components jar, where you can get a lot of different things, such as buttons, labels, text inputs, and a lot of other things, even sliders like this. So let me just show you something that will really blow your mind. So as you can see, there's so many things that you can do here. All you have to do is drag them and put them in, but they can also use something called voice. Voice allows you to make the computer say something, but it can't do that right away. So you have to use something here called blocks. I will come back to this later, but before that, I want to explain two different types of components. One is visible components, and 
The second one is invisible components. I'm sure you know what invisible and visible means. Visible means you can see it. So when you're using the app, you can see this type of component. But when it's invisible, that means only you can you can only see it uh, if you're the creator of the app. Because here, it shows invisible components. And this here is called the app tree, where anything can be viewed. But on screen one, you can see every single invisible component, component here. So all the components which are invisible will be viewed to the creator of the app. But if you, if you are the user of the app or the person testing it, you can't see it. That's why it's many. That's why it's so different from visible components. So now I want to tell you what blocks are. Here. I have used only a very little blocks, but it's super cool. Okay, so here I want to show you what apps are, what what apps need. These blocks here also help with coding for the app. You might be surprised hearing this, but apps also need coding because it helps function all the other components which need functioning, such as the switch. When the switch is on value change, that means when you when you turn on the switch, it should bring you to screen two. So for this, you have to use control. And here it says navigate. That means it will switch from one screen to another. So here in screen two, this might be a little confusing at first, but trust me, you'll get it. So here it says submit button. So this is called when click do. So you can see this arrow here. You can choose a bunch of other things in different screens and the same screen that you're using. And here it shows click, long click, touch down, touch up. So this means different ways of how you can interact with the component. Okay, I'll come back to this screen later. I mean, this part later. But here I want to tell what it does. When you click on button one, so you might be confused which is button one, it's the submit button. So when I click on submit button, it should say something. So it will, it, it will say exactly what you typed in. So anything, anything that you type in will be read out loud, which is actually really helpful if you want to like read. You can type in a long text, short text, even just a letter, and it'll read it out. For that, you must leave it blank so it'll know that you wanted to say anything that the user or tester types in. So here in control, you have to mostly use control or else you can't use the code. So here, I used a lot of control blocks, but the blocks here, when submit, aren't here. Well, that's because they actually are in a different place. Hold on a second. Ah, here. Every button should have this. When clicked, it should do something. Kind of like scratch. So, the exact same thing goes here. In screen one, when the switch is clicked or moved, it should navigate to screen two. And here, when the slider is moved, that means it'll navigate to screen three, where when it opens, the image one should open, where it shows the social media one. For this, I also want to explain something here. You've been seeing this a lot of times probably, and you might be asking, what is it? It's to edit your component. If it's invisible, you can't edit it, directly you must go into the blocks and unable it then you can start editing but this here if it's a visible component then yes you can do
directly. So here, it'll ask a bunch of things here. So you can choose anything you want. Like if you want it to go to the left side or the right side, up or down, it's up to you. But one thing here, there are two different things that you need to know. One is called simple. In simple, there are very basic things that you can edit. And in advanced, you have a bunch of advanced things. Like, if you want to change the sizing, you can. And if you want to change the spacing, yeah. There are so many different things you can do. But the most important thing about this is that you should have an image. An image should be like, if you have a plain background, like let's say there's no robot, it would actually not look that great, but it's up to you. But you should have an image or else the blocks won't work and it could kind of break your app. That means it can get laggy at any time because without an image, uh, here, in screen 3's code, this won't appear. And the code will show error. And if it has any errors, it will show a symbol which shows error. And here, you can see an error. Okay, so now I want to show you how the app looks. And if you want to see how your app looks, you can use Preview. Preview lets you see what your app looks like. Well, all the edits that you did. But Live Test shows what other people can see. Oh, and another thing is, if you want to publish this app, you have to get the Pro version, which is actually quite cool. You can publish it on any type of of website that means it can go on Google Play as well and even the App Store you can even share this with your friends just generate the link but be sure that you are aware of what time it expires it will expire in 60 days time so please be aware of that Well, afterwards, the time will reset after 60 days. Okay, so here, it shows the link for this app. All you have to do is copy it, and then you can send it to your own mobile as well. You can even download the app. Okay, so let me show what Live Test does. Okay, so here, you can see a mobile as your screen to like give you an image on how it looks. Okay, so let's test my app. Let's click on the switch here. Wow, now we're back to here. Mm, let's type in, hi, I'm Loading. <laughs> okay, let's try this. Edition. Edition. Hi, I'm coding magician. Wow, that actually works. Now. Let's clear this. Like I said before, clear means your whole text will go away. Okay, so here, let's move the slider. Okay, that's all. Thank you guys for seeing me doing this. And if, if you want to see more videos like this, watch all my other videos. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below on my videos. Thank you. Bye.